It's that time again. This is Katney with Python on Hardware News. We here at Adafruit do the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter every week. It's available through adafruitdaily.com. Head over and sign up for it or tune in to hear what's going on. First and foremost, the reason that I'm here today instead of Phil and Lamore is that they have diverted all of their attention to the efforts in New York City and the world to help combat the COVID-19 outbreak. We have paused some of the operations in New York City. Adafruit was deemed an essential manufacturing service and business in New York City by executive order to help with the distributing and making of PPE such as face shields and manufacturing electronics for life-saving or preserving equipment and development. There is a blog post with an overview and daily updates are being posted to social media. We are shipping a limited number of orders for healthcare professionals and urgent needs only. All other orders are being held for now. If you are working on COVID-19 related efforts, you can still make orders. Please email COVID-19 at adafruit.com with any inquiries. We are maintaining some but not all business operations to assist with providing essential services to combat the outbreak. Adafruit products are still available to the community through our partner DigiKey at digikey.com. Phil and Lamore want to say thank you to the community for keeping us strong. In Python on hardware news, all of the CircuitPython libraries have been updated to the latest Pylint and are now using Black formatting. Pylint is a tool for checking code against Python standards. Black is a code formatting tool that improves readability and maintainability. We had been using Pylint 1.9.2, but decided it was time to update, and as a part of that process, implemented the use of the Black formatter. This brings all of the CircuitPython libraries up to current Python standards. If you plan to contribute to any of the libraries, your code will be checked for both. So check out the Improve Your Code with Pylint and Black guide on the Adafruit Learn system to get set up to run both of them on your computer. The Expressive ESP32 S2 sample boards are now shipping to companies that ordered them for evaluation purposes. These boards have USB mass storage support, and Adafruit is working to port TinyUSB to the boards for CircuitPython support. The Open Source Hardware Summit wrist badge gets USB programming support. Drew Fustini writes, I sense Blinka is excited to no longer be tethered to a J-Link. Time to code some CircuitPython from the comfort of USB. If you're interested in keeping up with the progress, Oshawa now has a Discord server with a channel for badge hacking. The MQTT in CircuitPython guide has been updated to include setup instructions and code for use with Ethernet in CircuitPython. This guide helps you set up your CircuitPython board with the necessary libraries, connect to the internet, and connect your CircuitPython board to either an MQTT broker of your choice or the free Adafruit IO MQTT broker. We've included code walkthrough and advanced usage sections to this guide so you can roll your own mini MQTT project. Check out the guide in the Adafruit Learn system. Skip T on Twitter posted a Raspberry Pi thermal visual player that combines the images from a Raspberry Pi camera and an Adafruit MLX 90640 thermal camera on a screen using CircuitPython. Pigweed is a collection of embedded targeted libraries. They are an open source for 32-bit microcontroller development released by Google. They address the classic challenge in the embedded space of reducing the time from running git clone to having a binary executing on a device, setting up an entire suite of tools needed for non-trivial production embedded projects. Check it out on the Google blog. Allowing students access to the serial REPL in CircuitPython on Chromebooks can be difficult on centrally locked down devices. Here is a web-based IDE crafted in HTML and JavaScript that lets you see the REPL. Luckily, due to web USB, this is actually possible as long as you're using a modern version of Chrome. The source is available on GitHub. CodePope on Twitter wrote up a post using an Electfreak's joystick bit with the Adafruit Clue and CircuitPython. They discuss their experience with hacking on the Clue and using VS Code and the new CircuitPython extension. Full details are available on codepope.dev. Octopuslab.cz posts that they have an ESP32-based robot board, which facilitates using robotics with MicroPython. Seth Volts on GitHub put together a fun 70s industrial-inspired launch control panel with a YubiKey switch. If the YubiKey is authenticated as valid by the YubiCo servers and is recognized as enrolled on the device, it pulls a solenoid and allows the user to turn the YubiKey like a real key engaging the system. It uses a Raspberry Pi with the CircuitPython Blinka library. Video is available on YouTube. 
a pull request is pending to support CircuitPython on the Thunderpack board. The board includes an integrated battery, power management system, an STM32 F11 ARM microcontroller, USB bootloader, four high power PWM outputs, and 12 GPIOs. We have a few new learn guides on the Adafruit Learn system. Aaron put together a guide for a burning wizard staff. This project uses the prop maker Featherwing and NeoPixels, along with some inexpensive crafting materials to create a lightweight and sturdy cosplay fire staff. The code is entirely in CircuitPython, so it's easy to update and modify. Melissa shows you how to add a new single doored computer to platform detect for Adafruit Blinka, our CircuitPython library compatibility layer for Raspberry Pi and other single board computers. The first step to adding your favorite board to Adafruit Blinka is correctly detecting it. This thorough guide walks you through everything you need to do to get a new board added, including chip detection and the board definition. If you're looking to add a new board to Blinka, check out this guide. The Ruiz brothers have been working on a 3D printed MIDI guitar featuring Cherry MX switches, a whammy bar, an accelerometer for modulation, and a strumming mode topped off by some LEDs. It uses an Adafruit Grand Central to keep up with all the input. The whole thing is coded in CircuitPython written by Liz Clark. This guide includes everything you need to get started rocking out on your own guitar. We have a couple of great things coming up soon, both from Jeff Epler and one sooner than the other. First up, Microlab. We just released CircuitPython 5.1.0 Release Candidate 0, which includes support for Microlab. Microlab is a NumPy-like Python number crunching library that allows for performing related tasks up to 10 times as fast. Microlab makes things faster by operating on entire arrays of values in one operation. You can also do things like matrix functions, creating vectors, statistical functions such as standard deviation, working with polynomials, and slicing arrays. If you're interested in speedy number crunching, go to circuitpython.org and download 5.1.0 Release Candidate 0 for your board and give it a go. Second is so many LEDs. Paint Your Dragon is working on a new Arduino library called Protomatter for driving LED matrices. Jeff is working on porting it to CircuitPython and making it work with Display.io. It will work with the SAMD51 and NRF52 boards to begin with. Previously, there were no options for using these matrices in CircuitPython. As you can see, it's now working powered by a Feather M4, which features the SAMD51. So keep an eye out for ProtoMatter on CircuitPython. And that is your Python on Hardware News.